I want to thank uh, Max Wheeler, Rich Van Wagner, uh, Sam Alba, who are all my attorneys in this great firm, Snow Christian Sons Martin. I believe I've got the best lawyers in the country. Uh, and they've been working very hard with me and with, uh, frankly, with the prosecution. And I uh, look forward, to, frankly, to going to battle with these men at my side. Uh, let me just, uh, again, reiterate this morning, uh, I, I very much appreciated the way uh, the arrest was handled. Uh, I'll say, mention in a minute that we didn't think it, the arrest was necessary or appropriate, but the agents who came to my house were very respectful and polite. They uh, waited patiently while I dressed and, and got my boot on. Uh, the people at the jail, Sheriff Winder and all of his uh, folks down there were very professional and uh, really want to appreciate the way they handled it, how quickly they were able to process and get me home with my family and be able to come here and chat with you for a bit today. This is my statement. The charges of criminal wrongdoing are completely false. And I look forward to the opportunity now, after two years of lots of stories in the media, and being tried, if you will, in the press and in the media, to be able to respond. Now, I have complete faith in the judicial system. I've served that system for most of my professional career. And uh, I have complete confidence that justice will be served. However, I don't have the same level of confidence in the investigation conducted and led by Mr. Gill, and we will aggressively seek to have them held accountable. These matters have been tried to press for nearly two years, as I said, with really no meaningful chance to respond. The investigation has had intentional leaks to the media. In fact, the agents informed me that there was a camera in my neighborhood before they even arrived this morning, and the jail people said there were people outside before they even heard about the arrest. I believe uh, that these leaks were by Mr. Gill and his office to get the one-sided warrant affidavits in the public that you've all seen and reported on in order to solely my name and my reputation with no meaningful opportunity to respond. Let me just say that these warrant affidavits that you've seen and the public have read contain many material falsehoods and omissions that will be established as the case develops. The warrant affidavits that I reviewed were obtained by misleading the signing judge in very significant ways. I've not shown my hand at this point because I was not confident that I was dealing, excuse me, that I was dealing with fair-minded people on the other side, Mr. Gill in particular whom I could trust to address things objectively and negotiate in good faith. He has proven by his willful misconduct, including today, getting an arrest warrant issued instead of a summons, inviting the press to witness the arrest, notwithstanding the nonviolent nature of the allegations, my, my personal many efforts to voluntarily cooperate in answering questions, and my promise ahead of time that if this were to occur, with my attorneys would peacefully turn myself in. The issue, issuing of an arrest warrant and sending agents again to my home and handcuff me and humil humiliate me, further traumatize my family, is further evidence, I believe, of the political sideshow antics of Mr. Gill, the agents of the FBI, and the Utah Department of Public Safety. Since 2007, I have voluntarily gone to authorities a number of times to seek their assistance in investigating and prosecuting potential crimes that came to my attention in relation to some of the things that you heard Mr. Gill talk about today. For example, not well known is that after Mark Jensen, his head of security was sent by him to my hospital room, the day after my surgery to repair my leg, to try to bribe me while I was on pain medications. I immediately contacted the FBI and full, fully cooperated with federal agents in setting up a sting operation inside the home of my parents, being coached and directed and led in that by the FBI. During that time, Mr. Larson, Mark Jensen's head of security, reiterated on camera to the FBI his bribery attempt. As I say, I was coached and advised by the FBI agent, in fact, the FBI agent who was responsible for this very investigation, Michelle Pickens. Now imagine my surprise and dismay when search warrant affidavits, and even things that you heard today from Sim Gill, suggested 
to the Warren judge and to you that the very taping under the direction and coaching of the FBI and at the request of the FBI in my parents' home is considered that by them evidence of my committing the crime of soliciting the bribe. In 2012, when Jeremy Johnson came to me with allegations about my chief deputy, John Swallow, I went to the US attorney and to the FBI. I shared those allegations and spent several hours with them answering their questions. I contacted Special Agent Pickens and volunteered to come to their office without counsel to answer questions the best of my ability. I did so for several hours. Now the Department of Justice Assistant U.S. Attorney for Public Corruption, he was there. He flew all the way out from D.C. to be there to talk to me, to listen to my answers, and to ask his own questions. Several months later, the AUSA, that same AUSA in charge of public correction for the federal government, contacted my attorney and notified us that the Department of Justice was not going to pursue charges. Let me emphasize that the Department of Justice's agenda must not have been political. Because believe me, the resources of the federal government investigating and prosecuting crime far exceed that of any county prosecutor in the state of Utah. Now, I have repeatedly expressed a desire for well over a year now and a willingness through my attorneys to meet with investigators and prosecutors in Mr. Gill's office, and Mr. Gill specifically and Mr. Rawlings, to hear what they had to say and, like I did with the Department of Justice attorney present, answer their questions and explanations. I have been deprived of that opportunity by Mr. Gill which should tell anyone that rather than care about a full investigation, a full understanding of the facts, he prefers to charge ahead with incomplete information, which also, to me, and I think to anybody, suggests either a, context, uh, a contextual or a political, a pretext or a political motive all coming to fruition in an election year in which he's running for a second term. The investigation has been going on now for two years. Much of the information they have was given to them by others, like the investigators and the, and the House investigation and others. Why we wait until two few months before the election to announce these charges, I think, is other evidence of Mr. Gill's political motives in this case. Um, let me just say this. I've been a prosecutor. I've been a defense attorney. Any capable prosecutor, any capable prosecutor would jump at the opportunity to speak to the target of an investigation. Usually defense counsel don't let that happen. We offer to do that. They, you do that as a prosecutor to test the validity of those making allegations against the target. To, strength, to, to test the strength of your own understanding about the facts and the quality of the evidence, strength of witnesses, and so forth. Furthermore, notwithstanding the resources allegedly put into this investigation, the FBI and state investigators have not even bothered to interview dozens, literally dozens of key witnesses who are available, willing, and ready to provide clear and unquestioned evidence that refuted many of the charges brought against me today. Again, suggesting investigatory and prosecutorial misconduct. In addition, long ago, Mr. Gill made a commitment. Many of you reported on this, remember this. He made a commitment that before making any charging decision, he would screen or review the case with five other county attorneys. He said in order to avoid politicizing this, he would seek the advice and the participation in screening the case and making decisions on charging decisions with five other county attorneys and seek their input. I would like to know if in fact that occurred. I hope somebody will ask him that. I also have good reason to believe that Mr. Gill, I had good reason to believe that Mr. Gill would exercise some additional measure of independence by presenting the evidence to a grand jury so that people not involved in the political process like Mr. Gill would make the charging decision. That obviously did not occur. I would hope that given the fact that Mr. Gill is not a district attorney who actually goes to court and prosecutes cases, but rather serves as an administrator and a figurehead, will actually own 
his apparently unilateral decision to charge me and reconsider that in this case he will serve as lead counsel at trial and in the pretrial proceedings. Now, I served the state of Utah for 12 years as Attorney General. I choose to do so because I love the concept of public service. I committed myself 24-7, 365, hospital bed, cancer chair, whatever. I was always doing my job. I led initiative that saved life, protected the innocence of children, combated drug addiction. I volunteered my name and influence many times to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars to charitable causes, including those created to honor our fallen law enforcement officers, to heal officers who became sick after busting meth labs. I refused honoraria to speak. I did not accept offers to be on a paid position on boards. I had no outside employment. I did my job serving this state unilaterally and wholeheartedly. Frankly, my family here, I appreciate them being here. My wife and at least two of my kids and my daughter-in-law are here. My family clearly paid the price of an absentee father. They sacrificed because they also believed it was important for me to serve the public. Our financial circumstances have suffered. And of course, we're now trying to figure out how to pay our legal defense, but we will. We want the best, and we have the best. Now, in, in conclusion, notwithstanding all of the foregoing, I admit I'm not perfect. I never profess to be perfect. I, as all of us, made mistakes in my time as Attorney General. Probably, clearly, errors in judgment. But I have never intentionally committing, committed any violation of the ethics, codes of ethics. I have never misused or abused my, the public trust. And I certainly have not violated any of the criminal laws of the state of Utah. I had hoped that Mr. Gill would do the right thing, like the US Department of Justice did, and not abuse his power and the position of district attorney that you and I hand him to do. And that is to bring charges he knows he cannot prove beyond a reasonable doubt. He may be able to prove one element, but every single of those, one of the allegations you're reading, have multiple elements, and they have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt each and every element. I'm excited to go forward. The fact that I stayed at someone's home alone is not a crime. There are other elements that you yourselves can look up, and I'm sure you already have, many of you. And we get a chance now to present that to court, and I'm grateful for that. So he knows he can't prove these beyond a reasonable doubt. He's going to sp spend another perhaps millions of dollars of taxpayer money. But again, you know, he obviously delayed today's charges long enough to uh, two years to ensure that I can't establish my innocence and obtain justice until after this November's election. But then again, he probably doesn't care as long as his political aspirations are met. I know those are tough words. I think you know how I feel. I have to tell you, I want to talk to you. I want to answer each and every allegation. I trust and appreciate the media and the role the media plays in our society. But these gentlemen have insisted I not do so. We're not going to try our case in the public like it's been done to me for the past couple of years. We're going to go into the courts. We're going to follow the proper process, and that's what we'll answer questions about the charges. So with that, I've completed my statement. And as I stated before, I can't answer any questions about the charges. Mr. Sherlock, what about Troy Rawlings? If you're saying this is politically motivated, Sam Gill's a Democrat, Troy Rawlings not. Uh, as time goes by, you'll find out, uh, and as we do more discovery and get involved, uh, what role Troy Rawlings actually played in this. and. Uh, and we'll just leave it at that. So you question the role he played in a significant role? I think that there'll be some information that hopefully comes out. I'm not sure. So and Sim Gill just led Troy down some path and choice. I'll say this. Again, you, you know you report on this. Sim Gill said that he would have not just Troy Rawlings, but four other, I think he even said Republican county attorneys from around the state screen the case. He doesn't appear that he did that. I wish somebody would ask him if he did and why he ultimately decided to make the decision himself. But well, what about Troy Rawlings? You ask, why don't you, that, you'll have to leave that to Mr. Rawlings. And uh, the Department of Public Safety and the FBI as well, they're complicit. Uh, you know my feelings about, uh, I, in fact I stated it today, about uh, misrepresentations. Clearly, I believe, uh, untruthful and misleading allegations by the Department of Public Safety, Nes uh, Agent Nesbitt, who's leading the investigation, 
complicitly with the FBI investigators to mislead Judge Treese in signing those warrants. So conspiracy.